Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, Adrian Lenker interview. It's great, get ready, here it comes, but a technical issue led to the first minute of the interview being lost. Very sad about that, but the rest of it is intact and totally fine. I start off from here with a question about the size of the double album her band Big Thief just dropped, and uh, yeah, we just uh, continue from there, so uh, there you have it. Enjoy. I mean, from the outset, was the plan for this to be a double record of, of some sort? Or as you guys were kind of recording and writing and creating, was it just kind of growing and growing and growing and we just kind of, you know, let it continue until it just felt felt right? Yeah, I mean, I'm always slow to name what a record will be. Like the band, people were saying like, oh, it's, this is going to be like a triple record or like it's going to be like a quadruple record or a double record and I, I always keep myself with that try to like not have expectations and say like well we'll be lucky to get one one record out of it that feels potent and you know I kind of I like to let it just like shape itself um it wasn't necessarily an intention but we were definitely open to it becoming whatever it wanted to be hmm. And and ultimately, like, what what do you personally feel like if you could maybe put it in a nutshell? Like, what is that shape that you feel the record ultimately took? Because the, sonically and stylistically, it, it covers so many bases, you know? Yeah. It's just an exploration. Hmm. Um, yeah, like, and I think that's what how I think of records in general. I mean, Big Thief formed, I suppose, when I was like 23 or 22 and so and then all along the way we're archiving where we're at we're archiving our it's like where my songs are at where i'm at as a songwriter where we're at as a band how and like over the progression of our records i can hear the individual voices of each person coming out more and more yeah. and i feel like this is like this stage that we're at where it's like wow we're really in it felt so encouraging and heartening to to realize that we're at a more a more explorative playful place hmm. like i feel like we've been a lot more free um to to not try and put ourselves in any kind of box and to like let all of the all of the dimensions of who we are as individuals and then as a collective really shine and exist without feeling like okay well this is man, this has like so many country undertones and like, well, but this one feels more like shoegazy and like, well, this one's like, so like we need to have a whole record that's just, you know, what's our sound? Like what, we kind of just let that whole thing go out the window and like mm. trusting that whatever we make is us. It doesn't have to be a certain, um, look a certain way. So, yeah, so I feel like we yeah we're just in a place of like the more we're just getting more and more curious I feel and more and more able to like let go of control mm. trying to control or manipulate what we are and let it just sort of be more like an excavation process mm. if if you could speak a little bit more to what you just mentioned in terms of like the band dynamics and everything, because I know you've spoken, I, I know you've <clears> spoken <throat> before about the significance of the personal connectivity that you guys have as, as a unit. And you were talking about, you know, feeling like you're hearing everyone's voice and everyone's part sort of like more equally or more significantly in the record. Um, I mean, to the outside listener, obviously, when we're talking about voice in the literal sense, we're mostly hearing your voice, you know, but like in what ways creatively on the record, you know, from your insider view, like, you know, do we hear Buck, Max or James kind of like either taking the lead or having a larger influence on maybe the overall sound or direction on a track? Yeah, well, it's a constant dance and we do everything totally. I mean, it's like all of our influences are equal and we all have to sign off on anything before we move forward with it if one person feels uncomfortable we we just have to put it aside one you know, person has a veto vote and it's just off the table unless yeah ultimately like if someone were like no this is really i really really don't like this or something or i feel really uncomfortable then yeah 
it wouldn't feel good for anyone to know that that one person is feeling that. Um, mm. But then there's a middle ground too, because for instance, there's self-consciousness, there's insecurity that comes up when you're, um, when you're creating because there's vulnerability. And, and so like if I'm singing or Buck's playing or James is playing something, Max is playing something and we're listening back and there's like mistakes, you know, um, one, the, the person who played or sang that thing might be like, oh, I don't know. That sounds like, listen to that part. Like I, I, I messed that up. And then everyone else could be like, no, no, that's the best part. Like that, that's where the heart of it is. You know, that's what sounds so good about it. And I think we try to, I have noticed that each of us has more and more tried to like really surrender and list like when I'm singing something and I feel like I sang a take that's like everyone loves that whole take because we do everything live as a band really we're just like choosing full takes like we're not really like editing together a vocal or it's usually like that there it is that's the one and but there'll always be mistakes or things within that that I'm like oh that's um that's very imperfect or not what I was going for um and I've learned to surrender like if the if these three people who i've chosen to collaborate with if these three people are telling me this is beautiful i just i try like i'm in a place more than ever where i just trust that mm. um because i trust it beyond what i sometimes it's harder to see your own um the worth of what you're doing like it's hard to see it's hard to see how something that um you know s feels like a flaw could be could be the thing about it that shines. And that so often is the case because in the, in the places where we don't have control, there's something else coming through that's bigger or beyond, feels like it's beyond us. In the, in the places where we actually don't have control are, and where we were like, well, I didn't intentionally do that. That's usually where all this like chaos shines through. And like the chaos pad are, is so interesting like it's um so yeah I th I, maybe i'm like veering off your question a little bit no no you're you're definitely on it i i would ask you to maybe <clears throat> dig in a little further with a specific because you know for sure with what you're describing like every album that you guys put together has to be some sort of like journey and learning experience as like you know a creative unit and as a band and with this record especially with it being so large like what would you say at least for you guys collectively was one of the biggest takeaways in terms of like what you learned about each other or your process in finalizing this this creation was there some uh hurdle or sort of just like you know realization that you needed to come to to kind of get the album to where it needed to be hmm so many um right off the bat, like I, I can't think of like a, there wasn't like, like a singular takeaway or like a, something that could sum it all up because it was such a journey and such a long process from its conception all the way through its release into the world. Mm. Um, sorry, one second. Jason. No, go for it. I'm very much pro drinking water out of a mason jar. So, I mean, you're, <laughs> you're on point right now. <laughs> Um, I'm like, always seem to have these gi gigantic vessels of water, like at shows too. And it always feels like, I don't know, <laughs> like an ordeal. Um, sorry. One second. No, it's a vibe. Continue. Mm. Yeah. Gotta drink water. Um, yeah. What? Well, you, uh, you, you know, you, yeah. I, I, I think you pretty much like, you know, said that there's a lot of different things that, that sort of speak <clears> to, <throat> to what I asked. But like, you know, um, it's not in a vacuum. Like, yeah, sorry, I could just like I think like the process of making a record or of doing anything as a as a band, as a collective, a group of people, it's never in a vacuum. Like, OK, we're going into this this experience now where it's just going to be making a record it's just going to be making music it's it's all of each of our individual lives just smushed right up <laughs> against each other all emotions happening whatever each of us is going through is happening and 
there's no way I have found to set it aside and then just make me, well, we're all feeling all this stuff. Let's just get some takes though of this song. Like right. it never works like that. Like if someone's going through something difficult or if someone needs extra time in the morning or if there's a conversation that needs to be had because there's tension about something or if someone's family member is going through something, that all becomes part of what making a record is for us. And I think it just keeps being reinforced that at the core of it, it's not about being like, you know, rock and roll, like we're going to just like tour and make records and be like, get as good as we can get and be as big as we can get. Like it's way more about learning how to pay attention to where we're at more and more and learning how to be better friends to each other mm. along the way and like make space. Like, you know, when we, when we all came together after COVID, after, after the pandemic hit, and then we all came together after the initial few months of separation and sort of, the, the the world being in this state of shock and everything changing and when we came together it was so emotional and full of so much stuff and so the journey of making this album um you know dragon new warm mountain i believe in you like i was just thinking of that yesterday as i was like driving down the street like crying <laughs> like I believe in myself, you know, like, and that that's been something that's so been so hard for me over, over like time, you know, it's just like, you can look outside yourself and, and see so much beauty and, and people around you and give so much value to it, all that is around you. The art that someone else is making you know, the career that someone has made for themselves, the way, the way someone dresses, the way um, we're like in a world of like a, ma a, like a matrix maze of mirrors and like appearances and like conditioned from such a, or an early stage to think about how we're broadcasting ourselves. And I think like, it's just coming into focus more and more, like the reason why I wanna make music and, and, my bandmates too, I think, is like from a place of like re pulling apart the fabric of like this film of just like, like whatever it is, just this film, like coding everything and piercing through to the center of it and pulling it all apart and dissolving all of these ideas and all of these constructs. And then forging from nothing like some really strong like radiating pulsating thing that can be a source unto itself of starting with just like learning unconditional love like that is like such a brutal process to 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 start to like build that up within yourself and be like you know i believe in you even when you need to recoil like that sentiment of like even when even when things are extremely dark and like you can't see you can't make sense of anything and you're in the funnel like you're in like the cloud and like you can't see across to the other side or like you 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 see somebody retreating from their own like recoiling into themselves like i do that all the time where i shrink away from my own power and i'm like no but like because of ways i've been hurt or because of you know just all, all of this stuff and it's like but then to have this voice of something or someone saying to you you know like it doesn't matter what you do like or you know just saying like I, seeing now I'm losing it completely but no no I, I, I think well you know let me pick off on something that you just said because it's it's a theme or maybe it's something totally different that I hear come up in Big Thief be it in how it relates to like the title of UFOF or even um, in some of the lyrics of this record where, you know, directly by name, you mentioned alienation, you know, are, are you kind of speaking to that idea, that feeling of alienation and, you know, that atomization <clears throat> of the individual or society and like trying to combat that in a way? 
Um, in way, I mean, alienation is definitely a huge theme and idea that comes up all the time. And because of just we're steeped in that psychology that's like alienating, like, like just like otherness and like um, being in opposition and like, you know, I mean, yeah, we're, our culture is totally entrenched in racism and sexism and homophobia and all this stuff, you know, that that's just like absolutely built into like how, um, or has been and like how we, we've grown up and like how we're like registering information from such an early time. But then there's also like the internal alienating from yourself from yourself feeling alienated from yourself feeling disembodied feeling like there's so much going on like you know from like i'm talking like elementary school like being dropped off if you go into public school in a place where you're meant to just like spend the majority of your day focused on all of these very disconnected things and like memorization of things. And no one's actually looking at you and being like, I mean, I'm not, this is, I'm generalizing here because some people have alternate, have had alternative education experiences and, you know, but, um, you know, where is the teachings of like, you don't really have someone looking at you going, what's going on with you? How are you like, learning how to okay when like, there's like teasing and bullying happening and all this stuff and you learn you know like it, you learn these general concepts but you don't actually have I feel like all of the things that may be most important to learn from an early age are not looked at and considered and and taught and and like how to be how to value yourself and not seek external validation and how to be respectful to others and look truly look for the core of them and what they're how to actually listen and like how to actually you know interact with people in a way that's like filled with reciprocity and exchange and and also like how to actually see the earth around you and where you're stepping and what it is made of and how it relates to how you feel and what feelings are and what what does that indicate and what does that mean what is your intuition what is your instinct like what is this part of you going oh this all of these things are like math or something and you're given like this page of stuff problems to solve and you know some kids are going to be like oh yeah, I, I, I love this stuff that like, I can do this. And some people are going to be like, Whoa, what? Like, I feel so much resistance to this, but there's nobody going like, why do you feel resistance to that? Let's like, see where that's coming from and help you to understand what that's indicating to you. And, you know, so we're like taught to shove away our like in intuition and our instincts and like our individual like our our individual like guiding forces that are like sh- like and we're taught to put all that aside so that we can just feed this one system and measure ourselves according to this one system that will perpetuate itself and why did we start talking about that <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it's a poignant point. I mean, it's 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 the it's it's the natural downside to a one size fits all solution. To yeah. when you're talking about a whole range of different people that have different experiences, uh, especially when you're talking about kids at such a young age, where they're so early mm-hmm. on, you you don't really know what they're going to manifest in terms of like maybe various types of neurodivergence or you know different personality traits but you know it's like we've already got this like really super set curriculum for all of it and we're just going to try to shove it down everyone's throats and and there's going to be downsides to that and everything that doesn't get an a in this system that is developed everything that looks different is less than Mm. like you know you literally get a worse grade if you know you like 
And so, or it's called like a disability or like a this or that, you know, if it, if it's different, if it's divergent, if it's a, and so of course there's this feeling of alienation permeating throughout, like the, it's like walking on eggshells, dancing around, like being a, a human in, and, you know, like in society, it's like at, any wrong, any little difference, and and you'll surely be feeling either alienated from your own parent, or from your friends at school, or from the workplace, or from you know. It's like, so I feel like, of course, it it's a deep theme, but and the worst I have found, the worst feeling of alienation has been the one that has sort of that develops internally between you and yourself. Mm if you've had enough of that, like those experiences happen where, you know, you feel like, Oh, something's wrong with me. Or, um, <clears throat> and so I feel like mending that, like unifying the parts of myself has been like a huge thing of, of like, you know, um, like one part of me bringing in these other parts of me that I have actually like, that I rejected and like bringing them back in and being like, no, like you're okay and you're loved and you're, and you can be part of me. And how can I then like mend this and, and, and transform my own internal energy so that I like have energy and, you know, that, that's, that's just like getting to like one fraction of all of this and like what, why, I make music and how it's actually like a medicine to me, but I so much want that part. I so much want for people to feel cared for through the music and um, because, and, and that's the thing that sometimes when I feel so far away from myself, making these songs is what brings me back. It's what makes me feel like nourished in like a really deep way that I'm like really missing. And um, so, yeah, that like this whole entire record and all the songs thematically, like they're all songs that have helped me feel like, okay, I can, I can be here, you know, like I can exist. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying. Um <laughs> And I'm, I'm not trying to be silly or anything. I, you know, I've, I'm coming to terms with a, a lot of what you're saying in my personal life. Um, I, I came into just like a bad ADHD diagnosis at 36. <laughs> and like, you know, up until that point was just like really beating myself up all the time about a lot of stuff mm. and allowing other people to do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm trying to, you know, get back on my own footing with it. Yeah. It takes so much. I mean, in in doing that type of work or that type of thing, it takes so much patience with yourself within that experience too, like of just like, okay, whoa, this has hurt for a long time. I've been feeling this wound for a long time. And now like how to actually heal it. And, and it takes during that process, like sometimes it can be like, all right, why don't I just let go of it already or move pe like like I should be now now it's time to like be strong and like now I can see it so I should heal from it and like but actually like during the process of having those really deep realizations is the time to exercise that new muscle of like no like you're where you're at and it'll take it could be a lifelong journey but it deserves kindness at every step of the way. Not, you know, 
it it's it's really worth it i think no i i agree um you know no i i, I fully agree with what you just said um you know i what you said about kindness but then also I, again my own personal issue is just realizing that you deserve that you know yeah. because i was under the presumption that i didn't um yeah and now i'm getting to the point where i am feeling that way you know um so you know, like that you are feeling like you deserve it like i deserve it yeah 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 so we're thanks for that. sharing that with me uh, thank you for i know you feel like you're detouring but i think you've been very focused on what i'm asking you the whole time um so you know whatever mm -hmm. um Trying to dig to it, it's it's hard to put it into words. No, it, it is. I, I want to ask you maybe a, a thing that's even harder to put into words, which I mean, <laughs> you know, I may be um, not qualified to comment on this, given that I'm not a you know professional artist or anything like that. But you've spoken before about um, which again, something that I could I think is an outsider is almost like the artist struggle. Period. This idea of like doing your best to take this idea, this abstraction that exists either in your mind or on a plane somewhere, however it manifests or however it comes into being as, you know, sort of like a part of our imagination or something, and then try to manifest that in reality in some way, you know, and it's like the trend and, and the artist struggle, in my opinion, is bringing it from point A to point B, you know, or maybe there's five other points between parts, you know, the beginning and end to get there. I don't know. Um, you know, over the course of time that you've been writing and recording music, what do you feel like you've come to learn about that process? You know, personally, is it something do you feel like you get better at? Are there things that you can understand about it that help you move through it? Is it even a process that, in your opinion, after doing it for so long, is it knowable? Or is it just a complete, like, abstraction the, the entire time? Hmm. I mean, it seems like it would never fully be no because right. if there was a formula <clears throat> if there was a formula that would get that i could really rely on getting me from point a to point b or point a to point e <laughs> like then of course i would follow that each time i had the craving to make a song that make a good song or a song that i was really was really resonating i can't really choose like, I can't really decide, all right, now I'm going to make a, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to write, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a record now that, that feels really powerful. <laughs> you know, I, I don't feel like, I feel like part of it is knowable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the part that's, that I do have control over. And that does feel like a muscle. Mm. Um and I, I guess if you could put a pin in it, like what part of it seems the most tangible to you about the process or doing it, you know? Yeah. The part that seems most tangible and knowable is the physical discipline part of um, making the space, sitting down with time, like sitting at the desk, sitting wherever you're sitting, sitting on the floor on on the steps, like sitting down with pen and paper, with your instrument, without your, whatever it is, whatever that means to you. For me, it's sitting down with my guitar. Mm. Um, that's part of it. And then there's other aspects of it too, like what I'm eating and like what I'm thinking about. Like my thought, like if I'm in a pattern of chaotic thoughts that are just driving me into like driving me into the ground, or into things that don't actually benefit me. You know, if I'm in like a lot of thought loops and my mind is super busy and I'm sort of just acting in life out of those thought loops, I find that it's, I'm not really in a state where I can be receptive to any kind of energies. Like the more empty I can become of think of thoughts and like basically the more meditative stuff I do and I don't follow any specific practice or you know spirituality or religion but it's like I do feel like I have a spirit connection 
like a, a connection, a, a spiritual, you could say, rituals, spirit, um, in, in spite, like things that lead me to inspiration, like following paths of inspiration and curiosity to me comes from being connected with my inner child, which is like this, like pure, this part of me that I can't access if I'm like drinking, mm -hmm. for instance, like if I have like, if I, if I have two beers, I'm not going to be able to, I can't write a song like that to me is like, okay. Or if I'm like feeling jealous, I can't really write a song or like, if I'm like, you know, like being really, really, really hard on myself and I'm, and I'm just like panicked and stressed about like outcomes or something, you know, these things take me away from that. And the more I can sort of, it, it all ties to what we were just talking about, that that internal part of myself that's tender and trying and eager and earnest and has been since I was little. Like I have to, and I know this is a pretty standard thing in many different types of like therapizing texts and, and you know, but being like a parent to yourself, reparenting, being like, okay, honey, like, if your kid is about to sit down and like do a painting and like starts doing that thing and you're like, that looks like shit. <laughs> and you just tell them like, that is, what are you doing? Like, no, that that's all wrong. Like that kid isn't going to want to keep painting. It's no longer fun, you know? Right. So trying to talk to myself, that's the part of it. And and I, this is the part of it that feels like it is within can it is, I can work on it. It's tangible. It like, it's being like, Hey, sweetheart. Wow. You're, you want to make something cool. Let's make something like, and then just like not being self-critical while I'm doing it, but allowing to just, I can just write a bunch of stuff. No one ever has to see it. I can play a bunch of, you know, I can play horribly who cares? Like this is a, it's like a jungle gym. Like we can create creating isn't during the actual time of creating. It's not for judging. Mm. Like later you can edit, you know, or you can self edit in a loving way, but like, yeah. And the more, and that doesn't always come easy. So I'm, I, I actually think that's so important is to me is the self effort part of it of like, okay, like I want to have good thoughts. I mean, I want to think beautiful things. I want to think, I want to think in a way where I'm seeing beauty, where I'm looking for the connectivity of things in nature, where I'm seeing the light of the person at the, like, you know, the person who's like helping me fix my car or like the, like the neighbor or the like person I'm like run into on the like listening and hearing a stranger's story as you pass by, like seeing like a, like a sassy look someone gives another person on when you're like paying attention to like all the f humor and all the connectivity and interesting things. And you follow your curiosity into like interesting corners and you're like, and Matt, your imagination is able to just open up and like, getting myself into that place is the only tangible part of the process that I know. And then it's like, once you're there, the rest is up to, the rest is beyond your control. The rest is like the entire universe at work, like, or whatever you think of as a higher power, or if you don't think of things that way, maybe you think of it as like, whatever that like wind of like chance and chaos and just sort of like, the wonderment part of it like you can only bring yourself so far you bring yourself there you're open to it your receptors are there like open and then the rest of it you don't really get to that's where you get that's where that's the point in writing a song where I get stunned and I'm just like where did that come from what <laughs> like I wasn't thinking that at all and it just came out and what does that mean and like many of the songs that I end up loving, 
I only learn their meanings later down the line. Hmm. You know, so it's like I believe in the magic of that. I, I really think like there's some magic. There's a lot of magic in the world. And that's exciting. I know not everyone thinks that way or believes in that, but I I really do. I think that flying, like I think that like it's anything is possible and and that makes life that can make life really fun at times if you're able to tap into that no it's it's true i mean i in my personal life have a difficult time thinking that way a lot of the time but i i really sometimes am drawn to art that can inspire that um you know you you mention fun obviously but simultaneously like in terms of a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about and and also your creative process with big thief um, you obviously like take it very seriously. It's a very, you know, important studied and, you know, focused thing that you're doing, but especially on this new LP, you know, did you guys consciously given how some of these songs came out, like try to give yourselves room to have a bit more fun with some of the songs? Because, you know, some of the tracks, especially like the more backwater <clears throat> folk ones, like you guys just sound like you're having the time of your lives with it. You know what I mean? In comparison with like some yeah. of the older stuff. Yeah, we had so much fun. We had way more fun on this record than our past records. <laughs> right, nice. It, fe- it mean, feels yeah. that way. It feels that way. And fun, I used to think fun was like, no, that can't be a goal. Like, that's, I need, we need to be like champion. Like, I was like into like karate growing up. I did like eight years of it. And then like, like, and my dad, I had a really intense relationship with him. And he was sort of like, conditioning me to think of like winning all the time and like wow. forming this career um but anyway um love you dad because i know you're gonna look up that but um yeah but it was it, it was an it was an intense patterning um like and so at first i think you know making records with the i was like <laughs> I had to really, really unwind myself and be like, nothing is at stake. I'm making this music because this music, because it's important to me and that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks at the end of the day. Like, um, but I think like getting really intense and taking it really seriously and it all came from earnestness and I, and I love the records we've made. I mean, I love them. Like I look at them endearingly, you know, I don't like love every, so I, I hear some of the songs and I'm like, wow, I wouldn't, I've grown so much, you know, but also I can see the earnestness in our process, mm. but it's only recently occurred. Like I've only recently realized that fun is a quite an, a serious endeavor. Like it's like <laughs> having fun is so important. And like, <laughs> it's, like being playful, like I've had to reteach myself how to play because even in music school and stuff, like music school, like I, at 19 years old, or whatever, when I went to music school, it was like, this is all about like being the best and like shredding the hardest and knowing the most. And then I saw all these kids like leave totally discouraged, either like quit music or get through it and like, but like all the, a lot of the life sucked out of it. And then, you know, and myself and like, there were times where I felt so, I felt like music was like supposed to be this very like serious. Yeah. I, I think I'm just restoring this part of like play and the importance of play and what it brings about when you're really enjoying like what you're doing and we we did like when we a lot of the songs on here on on this record we were in this little room like smaller than the room i'm in now um and just playing all, all the songs to this eight track tape on this eight track tape machine um you know like dinner my brother that, i mean that's the setting you guys shot the music video in right yeah 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 that's where we recorded all those songs right. and just like that, just, just playing them. And it was fun. Like it, it was so fun. It was like, you know, we were like making dinner in the room, the next room and 
I mean, my little brother was there cooking and then he'd come in and like play the jaw harp and like my puppy was there and like we were sweating and like laughing and there would be this really loud train that would go by like every hour and we would we had set up speakers outside on the porch so when we would listen back we did it outside Hmm. um and it was just so much fun and i think that energy comes through like i think you can feel through recordings when people are playing together oh you absolutely absolutely you can yeah yeah so yeah you know i I wanted to ask you from a writer's perspective uh, you know especially since you brought up the fact that sometimes you'll write things down or things will come out and then after the fact you'll get a sense of what they mean or what they could mean um you know not only is there a lot of variety instrumentally and aesthetically across the lp but there's like really a variety of narrative and voice across the record and do you find yourself having to approach things differently or think of things differently when you're either on a song like the title track, maybe writing about or writing from a more metaphysical place or maybe another song on the record where you're telling like, you know, literally a story or maybe like an experience of what happened and maybe doing your best to like detail it and like catch the major, you know, narrative movements. So the significance of the, you know, tale stays intact and people have a takeaway from it. Mm. Well, I guess I should, I think it's, it's actually more so like half, half. I mean, sometimes a song just comes out and I haven't even had a single thought Mm. like change the first song. Mm. Um, That song just kind of poured out in like an hour and I just sat down and the whole thing came out and I didn't even really have time to think about it. I mean, I knew I felt it really strongly and I was going through a lot of letting go at that point, but I didn't really construct it. If that makes sense. It just kind of came through. Um, But there are times where I have to piece the story together more or actually conjure up, like I'll look back in journals and I'll, and I'll like try and remember specific details or I'll write like three pages worth of thoughts around one verse so that I can like get to the meat, you know, piece together the right descriptions or, you know, there's times where I have to put in more legwork to finish a song and, or to write a song. Um, And yeah. And Buck and I have been co-writing together more and he is much more like, like I'm sort of more like abstractions trying to just like channel stuff and let things come through in a cathartic way that helps me to open and release. Like, I just have to feel it in my guts and that's about it. And for him, Buck will like, Buck will spend like months on a song and he'll like, he is such an incredible storyteller. Like he's like in a different, like he's a storyteller. It's crazy. Even when he speak, when he tells stories, it's incredible. Like when he just, um, verbally verbally yeah that's what i mean like when he's just talking and he tells stories it's incredible but the way he constructs stories and he thinks back to like things his you know he collects things he collects stories you know from his grandfather or from his mechanic or like from or like he'll he'll do deep dives into researching certain things to really 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 get down to the grain of like what that that particular time and moment in space looks like really up close. Mm. And so it's been cool because we've been co-writing a bit. Like we wrote the song Certainty together. Mm. And um and then our two styles mix. So it's like, you know, um I would say he's more practiced in this one way. And then I have I'm much more like, yeah, I just kind of like open to the forces and let them flow through and he's more he constructs things in this but we're learning from each other and that might change i mean i'm sure i'll absorb more of those qualities as i'm as i practice as i get older you know when i'm 60 70 80 if i'm alive i want to be writing songs and like it'd be cool to dive more deeply into narratives who knows what they'll sound like but 
Yeah. You were alluding much earlier to kind of the process through which you guys would choose songs, decide on songs, um, and and then quickly mentioned like maybe as a result of that, um, some tracks fall to the wayside or or, or are even lost. Um, you know, is is that something that in Big Thief or even in your own personal process that you often find yourself confronted with? I, I find it interesting that you sort of threw that out there as if it wasn't, you know, really a thing, um, which I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, I, I just find it, you know, interesting because th- there's probably some people who, you know, that may give anxiety. Oh, I lost this song idea or da, 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 da. But, you know, as these things are coming to you, if it doesn't stick, are you just kind of nonchalant about it? Just let it go. Something else will come. If an idea is strong and I really like it, it usually lasts forever. <laughs> and if it's not as strong, it disappears. Mm. Um, although that being said, now it is getting to kind of a, a point where I'm like forgetting ideas that I love mm. or songs that I love even because we have a lot of songs now. <laughs> and right. even on this last year, I probably wrote more than I ever had because I did a solo record yeah. and we had this and it was probably like writing like 60 songs in a year or something which is awesome but also felt overwhelming (laughs) and i don't ever bank on that happening like i'm totally open to writing one song a year or (laughs) whatever but um you can't really keep it's like trying to hold on to water it's like trying to contain a river in your hand I'm, i'm i am starting to have more of this feeling of I just need a archiving is important so when we can we archive as many of the songs as possible mm-hmm. constructing records is important maybe coming up with an alternative way of releasing music that isn't just dependent on when we release records but it's like a way we can dump all the songs that didn't make records into the world you know like because there are a lot of songs that I like some of my favorite songs didn't make the record that um and the question is do we let years go by and someday just like release all these unreleased tracks or do we put out like a living organism of like tracks that don't fit on records that just keeps getting added on to over time i mean that's more of a question of just like in this day and age what does it mean to release music and put out records and what's the difference between like I, I'm someone who like loves records. I'm sure you can like understand just like, you know, appreciates the art form, the the format of yeah. like make. And so as a band, we care about that a lot too. So we really, really labor over how we sequence a record, what songs make the record. And like, we do it for, we think about vinyl as the template because we're not really sequencing or making these for people with we're making it with like the biggest nerds in mind, you know, like thanks. not, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Because like we are that, like, that's what we really care about. And right. I, and I know that a lot of people don't absorb music that way these days. Like a lot yeah. of people, it's like making playlists, taking single tracks, but I, I just really, really like that format. I think it gives like so much richness to it, to the art form. I mean, but yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. No, I, I don't, I don't disagree. I mean, you know, I, I think the, the, the beauty of the way everything has kind of panned out now in terms of like music consumption, and there's a lot of downsides, but I, I can at least say now that like, uh, unlike the era of like when we went from records to tapes and tapes to CDs and CDs to the, like, it, it, it feels yeah. like right now, whatever you want to do, it can all kind of coexist. Like if you feel like you want to come out with a cassette, there's an audience for that. If you feel like you want to come out with a record, there's an audience for that. If you feel like you want to come out with some viral music video and chop it up and put it on TikTok and get the most streams on Spotify, there's an audience for that. You know, no matter what direction you want to go in, there's, there's a P there's a group of people out there who will consume it if it's done well. Yeah, totally. 
it, I mean, do you, you know, as, as an artist, do you feel, do you feel that same sensation? Is, is that the reality, you know, for, for you, or do you still feel constrained by the way things are currently kind of running in terms of music releases? Um, you know, I, I think specifically of like, you know, a, a lot of the exposure that, you know, you guys got early on came through like Bandcamp, you know, and, and Bandcamp has, you know, been bought out recently, you know what I mean? Um, Ch changes like that in the current state of things, you know, do you, do, when it comes to putting out a record, does it feel open for you or does it feel constraining? There are constraints for sure. Um, I, as like, as an artist would like to just finish a record and put it out the next day. Right. Oh, it's done. Cool. Let's give it to people. That's what feels like the most natural momentum to me, you know, sure. like our our part is done. Okay, here you go. But it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you got to wait six months because, you know, we've got to manufacture the vinyl and we've got to, like, make sure that, like, you know, it can get to all these different parts of the world and get, like, <clears throat> you know, and, and there's going to be reviews on it. And let's, and like, I feel very grateful, blessed, lucky, privileged to be in a place where we have a team and infrastructure to, help facilitate releases happening in a way that like it's likely to reach people at this point or like it actually gets put out into the world. Yeah. But still I have like my own dilemmas and confusions. I have my own, I'm like trying to, I have a lot of questions and a lot of things that I'm, that I grapple with in, in regards to like recognizing and acknowledging that though it is about art and it is music, we are a part of an industry and the industry, though it's the music industry, is still an industry functioning through capitalism and is very, you know, it's a machine. Like, and most artists are put on this sort of like, this convey or, you know, it's like put through kind of the same things. Well, first you have these sort of blogs or like, um, what are they called? <laughs> like reviewers, pitchfork, all those Re things. I, yeah, yeah. Those those guys. Things. You have all these things. You have people, they write about it. Then you get on this next little tier. Then you get a little bit more and then you get a little more. And then, and I'm kind of just like, what is our goal here? You know, like, are we like, I, and also like, it's such a huge, like carbon put, footprint to like, just like to to tour to um you know to manufacture records and to manufacture products and to to like drive around fly around so much and but then here's the other side which is like okay but i really really do think it's amazing that people have access to the, these songs that i really care about that i want it to be accessible and then i also want to play play shows because that feels like like a really powerful thing to be doing because they're essentially peaceful gatherings wherein we can actually like all be focusing on things together as human beings that feel uplifting in a way or like give us a little bit more fuel to face the world that we're in to face you know gives us like if I see a show that really inspires me it helps me face the rest of my life <laughs> Mm -hmm. if I like if I come into contact with art that inspires me it gives me the fuel to feel inspired about being alive which matters so it's like finding that balance um and I feel limited by you know like things like um like there's just only a certain amount of um um like distribution companies or there's only certain like promoters or like venues kind of bid over like artists like yeah performances get, like performances like there's there's all these things where I really I want to find a different and I'll like find different pathways and find ways of altering things yeah. um but yeah just chiseling away at it through time um because I yeah it is easy to feel like you don't really, there isn't much choice in how 
the trajectory of like making the record and then when you once you if you want it to get out into the world like you have to work with what's there you have to like work with all these platforms that make that possible mm. and then there's obviously people within those companies that are great people but then there's also parts of some of those companies that feel less you know feel like mysterious in in a way that's like what what is this operation how is it at its core what it's clearly just like it's like a money making machine you know right. you like have to so and then there's like the pure part there's a part of me that's like when big thief started we were living in a van like booking any and every kind of like basement or backyard barbecue or weird schoolhouse like we were booking all of our own shows we were we were like never had money you know but we felt so rich because we were just like we were burning cds and like get we had something on bank we had stuff on bank camp and we were like <clears throat> doing it that way and it kind of felt like I don't feel like more fulfilled now than I did then I feel fulfilled that I feel it feels amazing to continue to be able to making music like that but there's times where I think of the simplicity of that of you know of just us like booking these shows burning these cds it didn't feel like we needed anyone's permission or anyone's like we didn't even we did it for like no money and right. we were just like we were still doing it we were still playing shows and making records and that's what we're doing now playing shows and making records um, yes i mean systematically like, and and economically whether you're talking about a platform like bandcamp or even just a band you know it's it's like in order for anything to be successful or be long term it's like you have almost no other choice other than to to some degree get on that track where it's like it has to get more popular and it has to generate money and it has to grow and yeah. you know from there eventually sometimes depending on how you make your choices there becomes the decision well now we have to sell it off because now it's it's reached the peak of popularity and mm -hmm. you know so so now it's like it's it's the most important and viable thing that it can be in the system sellable buyable you know purchasable um you know and and there can depending on how it starts, still be a pure expression at, at the end of that. But it's like, you know, still to, you, you still almost have to like involuntarily be a part of that, a part of that track in order to engage in the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like hard to understand the track itself. Like right. it's always changing. It's always changing. And then it's easy to condemn parts of it and be like, well, fuck this part or like, right. you know, like, like fuck that company but then it's like there's so many intricacies within those things that it's like you unless you just want to like make huge statements and be like well you know like i think this, this well i maybe should, <laughs> but yeah just like the streaming like the spotify stuff like obviously it, there's a lot of issues with it and like but then it's confusing too because it's like well some artists like can afford to just be like well, you know, fuck Spotify or whatever, you know, like, well, it's like, and I get like condemning something like that, but then it's like, there's a lot of other people who can't afford to be like, well, and then this is making oh, up, sure. maybe not, this is just making up a small fraction, like an offensively small fraction of my income, but yet it's a part that I need. I like, you know, like I can't just, you know, like it's a, it's, it feels, it feels complicated the state that things are in now but it also feels like it was never fair like even you know like like when when it was all physical when it was all physicals and people would be in record deals mm -hmm. people were screwed over all the time but yeah, i mean like, back in the day there were tons of charts of like how many fractions of a cent artists actually made off a cd sale you know yeah or people who never saw any money from something like someone sure. just took it from them and then down the road they like yeah so it's never been great i mean it's never it's never really been in the artist's favor like um and i mean there's such a vast community of artists who i am so inspired by who don't really make money who've been working at it for a decade or more playing shows 
making like incredible music, um, you know, who, who are still scraping by. And, and then, you know, there, it, like, it's, it's, it's all kinds of, I don't understand it fully because I don't think that like recognition or mon- or financial stability or, or any of this is um, based on like quality of art all the time. Some, in some cases, I feel like it, it can be, but in many cases, I feel like it, it's almost irrelevant, like, or it's almost completely disconnected. It's less about it's less about the body of work and like the energy that the artists are putting in and the quality of the work, and more about like just if it how it hits, you know, like just like the vibe and like I mean I don't know, and I'm not putting yeah I just it it really bewilders me sometimes because mm-hmm. I would say that I have a lot of a lot of heroes like at the moment who are alive and making work that you know they're just not that well known and to me it's like legendary you know so it's that's something i want to do in my life is help help support um make a space maybe make a studio or make some kind of space where you can just people can come make records for free make records and like you know, without needing to have the label and the this and the that and the backing, like, like a, just like a really, really sanctuary type space where like people can come and not have to worry about paying like a crazy studio fee and people who have incredible music to record can just come and make these, make these records or I don't know, something I'm like, how is this going to be? Or kids can make records or like, no, it's, it's, it's true. Like if we had, if if we actually had like, I don't know if we could shave something off of our, what, $800 billion military budget to have some kind of like art institution that would create, you know, a series of buildings or spaces where people could go and create music for cheap or something, you know? Yeah. Um, instead of just like cutting school budgets every year and, you know, making it impossible for kids to get into the arts and in sort of like a an easier way. I'm, yeah, um, guitars, not guns. You know, we gotta we gotta get like guitars in people's hands and like, man, the set. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, something. That's some more the direction of like what I want to like feed into as time goes by. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about it because I don't. I want to keep touring and I want to keep making records. Um, hopefully throughout my whole life but I don't want to like just like keep trying to just become like a big rock star you know like I don't want to just like what now that I'm here yeah you you don't want your life to just be an endless series of album cycles you want to yeah you want it to become something yeah and and it's starting to like the ideas are just starting to like form and like and I kind of see the shape of the space and I kind of see that I have built such a music community over the years of van touring and stuff that I know so many like incredible, just like musicians, engineers, like all who would come and totally volunteer like a workshop, like teaching this, you know, teaching like engineering to a bunch of, or like, and I don't know, it could also somehow also be a place where other types of arts are incorporated too, and maybe like farming. And so then like the meals are all coming from the land. And then like, maybe there can be like a camp or like parents come with their kids and then like the parents all like do like stuff. And then the kids all go and like make music in the studios. And like, there's just like some kind of, just like a space that's like, just, yeah, it just feels like it's like brimming with like, like, you know, it can, yeah, I don't know. Be, but yeah, <clears throat> that, that, that type of stuff or those types of conversations it, it excite me a lot. No, I mean, it's, it's a great idea. And I mean, it's something to, something to hope for. Um, and there's already stuff like that too. Hmm. So, um, but I feel like there could be so much more of it. There like could be said. more. And, and networked in such a way where everyone can collectively kind of be aware of where it all is, you know? For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've given me well over an hour 
and I greatly value your time and I appreciate you again coming through and just, you know, being open about everything. Oh, likewise. Thank you so much. Um, Adrian Linker, appreciate you. Have a good, have a good day. And, uh, you know, again, the new record's out now. It's great. Everybody go listen to it, buy it, stream it. And, uh, you know, we'll hear from you guys again soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.